everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Steph and today we are doing another book recommendation video. I'm super excited for this one because someone actually requested on my TikTok and I was like that's a genius idea because one of my previous book videos was super specific and it was I hate everyone in the world but you trope. So I decided to do a video similar to that because that was my most popular book recommendation video to this day. I am doing the trope it's you. It's always been you. You know those books? They go their separate ways and they always find their way back to each other and you know that moment of weakness or one of the characters just confesses their feelings and they're like it's always been you yeah all of these books are kind of that trope i have so many books to recommend today so the first book i'm going to be talking about is the book i'm currently in the middle of i'm literally like almost done i'm probably going to finish today but that's him by serena bowen and l kennedy if you know the authors they've written top secret which was such a good book l kennedy wrote the off-campus series and this book is a hockey romance between two boys that both play hockey if this book was part of the off-campus series it would flow perfectly like they have the same dynamic the same feel the same vibe same hockey romance except this is just two boys it is so 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 good and basically it's about these two boys who have been friends since they were really young they only see each other in the summer at hockey camp something happened between them one of them starts questioning his sexuality wondering what's going on and ends up breaking off the friendship with his best friend because of this and they don't talk for four years and then four years later they're older more mature they are going to be playing against each other in the hockey playoffs and so they see each other for the first time and it's their romance and it is so so good they definitely found their way back to each other i really really am enjoying this book i'm still not done with it i'm excited to finish and see how it ends and there's also a i think this is a duology or a trilogy so i'm excited to read the rest of this as well next book i'm going to talk about is the crush by penelope ward this book is brother's best friend but they started having a little tension back when she was in high school, I think. Something super tragic happens, so he leaves town. She's left heartbroken, something super bad happened with her parents and something bad with him, and now everything just seemed to be falling apart. And then a few years later, he comes back. The brother is super protective of her and of his friendship, so they don't want to get in the way of that. But they have this obvious tension, this obvious pull towards each other that they just can't deny. They try to date other people, but it's always each other. This is a fun read for sure. I'm going to recommend a few Penelope Ward books today. So the second one is Room Hate. This is childhood friends to enemies to lovers. I've talked about this book on my channel before, but that's because I really, really love it. You get the friends to lovers, but you also get the enemies to lovers all in one book between the same couple. The boy in this book he's amazing he is really mean at first because it's enemies to lovers there's miscommunication so they're not on the same page but basically the boy and the girl were friends they had a falling out and he ends up getting engaged or he has a girlfriend for a long time so they're in two separate relationships not talking to each other but then her grandma passes away and the grandma left a house in both of their names the boy and the girl that haven't talked in years so they inherit this house together so they have like joint ownership of this house it's like a summer home and they're like a vacationing but they both have partners they enjoy this there's also another trope in here that's like kind of like a little plot twist but it's so cute i really enjoyed this book as well by penelope ward next book is stealing home by harlow cole this is the second book in the saint michael's duet the first book is called interference but this book is kind of their second chance so the first book is their first romance when they're in high school the end of that book ends with something totally crazy that breaks them up and you're like she is never going to forgive him and then this book is their second chance he also gets famous in their time apart between the two books there's a time jump he has to kind of like pine and grovel for her forgiveness it's also brother's best friend so you get the brother's perspective of like the whole situation it's super like a cliche romance where he's so protective of her in the first book when they're young they've known each other all growing up that book turns into a romance and then this one is him trying to get his way back to her after something that really really bad happens and i just really liked this duet it is pretty cliche but it is really good next book is addicted to you by krista and becca ritchie this is the first book in a series my favorite series of all time i'm gonna focus on this book today because I really never focus on individual books from this series. The first book is about Lily and Lo, and they've been friends their entire lives pretty much. Super, super close friends. Both their parents are business owners, like CEOs. They're super rich. They've kind of grown up together going to like all these like ritzy events. Both of them end up developing addictions, and only the two of them know about it. These two best friends know that the other one is struggling. So they decide to come up with this little ploy where they're gonna fake date each other. They go to all these events that they have to go to pretending to be together. They've been fake dating for years they literally live together and nothing romantic really happens between them they have such like a strong platonic
platonic love and they realize how bad their addictions are getting and they start wanting to help each other and fix each other and they can see their best friend is literally falling apart and it ends up turning into a really epic romance. Lily and Lo have five books. You get to see the character development. I've never read anything like it. It is so, so good. There is definitely a moment where it's like, I've loved you. I've always loved you. It's you. It's only you. Fake dating or not. Like you can see the fake dating lines start to blur with what is going on. Are we faking this or is this real? It's so good. I love Lily and Lo. They're two of my favorite fictional characters of all time. You guys hear me rave about the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series all the time. So I'm not gonna even go into it. But this book especially is definitely this trope. Next book is Vicious by LJ Shen. This book I feel like is the most fitting to this trope in this entire video. This book is literally the embodiment of this trope. There is literally a specific moment where I'm pretty sure these exact words are said where it's it's you, it's always been you, it's something like that. In this book you get to see the perspective of Amelia in high school and she's dating all these boys and she's kind of like an outlier to school because she lives in a really wealthy town but her parents are his family's housekeepers so she's kind of just like a poor kid in a rich town, doesn't really fit in but all the guys really like her. Like she's super down to earth and cute and quirky so a bunch of guys are like crushing on her except for vicious he hates her so much he's so mean to her like literally so mean and so it shows them in high school and she ends up dating one of his best friends and then there is a time jump she is desperate for a job because her sister is sick and she needs to take care of her but she can't afford it and vicious ends up owning this huge corporation so he's so wealthy and they run into each other and he gives her a job offer because he kind of wants to just have this upper hand to try to just like have this power over her kind of like a little karma because they've always had this like back and forth dynamic that's what he tries to convince himself but really you know it's because he wants to spend time with her and he likes her but he is just like such a brooding character like so mean literally there's like no soft moments until he breaks which i really liked to be honest there's so much tension between them they just don't get along and so much is happening and then they reach this breaking point he gets super jealous so that's vicious which is the first book in the sinners of saint series by lj shen Next book I'm talking about is The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste. This is also Brother's Best Friend, which a lot of these are, which I'm surprised about, but River, the girl, has a super traumatic past and she's adopted into this family and she's super closed off and reserved and she ends up really bonding with her adopted brother's best friend, but he is years older, I think like five years older. So at the time he kind of just looks at her as a little sister and nothing happens, but she's always had a crush on him, like since she was a little girl, kind of like a little harmless crush on him. He's always been so protective of her and then there's a 10 year time jump, something happens happens between them and she's like oh my god I can't believe this is happening he has a fiance there's a reason he can't leave his fiance he's like realizing what's happening with River and he's torn and they definitely find their way back to each other but it doesn't happen easily that's for sure there's always something that is keeping them apart it is frustrating but it is so entertaining to read so that's the truth about heartbreak next is Ruthless King by Maya Hughes I hate the cover so I'm not even gonna show it because why don't let the cover fool you the books are so so good Good. So this is also part of a series, The Kings of Rittenhouse, but you can read them as standalones or read them all together. They're each book about a different boy. This one is a second chance romance. Throughout the series, this is the third book, and in the first and second book, you can see this couple when they were first together, their breakup, and then this book is their redemption. So it's cool to see it from the other character's perspective, but there's a huge miscommunication, so much drama between these two characters, but you can tell that they're soulmates. After much conflict and so much that's going wrong and pretty much in love to enemies to lovers. It is so good. It's one of those books where the guy is like trying to stay away, but he knows he can't. Like their pull is too strong towards each other and it's just really, really good. I recommend this entire series. I'm actually gonna talk about both of these books at the same time because they're super similar. 57 and Dirty Letters I talked about in my last video that was if you like this book then you'll love this one These books are like so similar So that's why they have this same trope in common as well But basically both these books involve two kids that were pen pals a boy and a girl growing up They agreed not to meet each other in person They agreed never to like look each other up or anything and never find each other in real life and just use each other as like best friends Anonymously they tell each other literally every detail of their lives growing up and in each of the books One of them stops writing and the other ones left wondering why they stop writing whatever this one they become enemies he meets her in real life and she doesn't know it's him the guy from her letters and he hates her in real life but he loves her in the letters so he's super confused so they have an enemy to lovers romance this book is so so good and this is by penelope douglas and then in this one they kind of find each other and one of them is famous and the other one didn't know that because they just been anonymously writing letters so that's kind of a cool trope but this one's more of a soft romance that one's more drama filled and they've known each other like their entire lives since they were in like elementary school and then ends where they're separated they stopped talking for a 
a while, but they found their way back to each other, and I really like both of these. Next is another book by Penelope Douglas, which is Bully, which is another friends to enemies to lovers romance. Similarly to Room Hate, they had a falling out. The boy goes out of town, and when he comes back, he's so mean to her, hates her, and is bullying her at school basically and she decides she's done with it she starts standing up for herself and it's enemies to lovers all of these books like i said are they were together then apart and they find their way back to each other and i really like it so that's bully by penelope douglas almost done but the next book i'm talking about is november 9 by colleen hoover this is like in my top three favorite books of all time. So unique to anything I've ever read. This book takes place over five years or six years. Anyway, basically there's this girl named Fallon. She gets in a tragic accident, leaving her body covered in scars. And she wanted to be an actress and her dad is like a successful actor. So he's kind of like disappointed that her career isn't going to work out. And he's kind of really mean to her. This guy named Ben overhears the dad yelling at her in a restaurant. So he slides in the booth and pretends to be her boyfriend and stands up for her. And that's how they meet. Ben is probably one of my favorite book boyfriends of all time. I love him so much. He does have his faults, but he is one of my favorites ever. I love him so much. So basically, Ben and Fallon have this like day together on November 9th of that year. She's moving across the country the next day, so they don't really have time to get to know each other. And she's like, I don't want to start anything with you. Like we had a really great connection and chemistry on the first time we met, but I can't start anything because I'm moving. So then they strike a deal that they'll meet up every year on November 9th, just to, like reunite and catch each other up on what happened in the past year and no contact in between then. And then they give each other these little Little tasks to complete before the next time they see each other and so this book documents each of their November 9s over the span of what five years and then their plan is to see if after these years if they last that long they'll decide what happens from there in these years so much happens with other characters in the book you see from each character's point of view what they're going through and when they reunite <laughs> I can't even say what happens but they are pulled apart there's a plot twist I'm assuming if you're watching this video you love romance novels and the boy in this book is a writer and Fallon tasks him to writing a romance novel because he doesn't read romance or write romance. So you get that kind of aspect as well of him trying to figure out what a romance book is like and I thought it was really funny because obviously we're reading a romance book. He's like, how do I make our first kiss like book worthy? Like what makes it book worthy? And I'm just sitting there like, I'm about to read it. So it's, it, it's, it's gonna be book worthy. I just love this book so, so much. If you know Colleen Hoover, she's like the best author ever. So you know her book's gonna be good, but there are so many heartbreaking moments in this. I cried. There's so many like beautiful moments and sad. I just love this book. I love the romance between these two characters and I still to this day have never read anything like it so I would really recommend this one. Last book in this video is Serenading Heartbreak by Ella Fields which is brother's best friend. She's had a crush on him her whole life and they finally have like this summer together and then he leaves to go on tour with his band and basically the first half of this book is the buildup of their relationship which is so good like I had butterflies the whole time I was like what is gonna happen and then they end up going their separate ways she goes to college she's like trying to get over him and in college she ends up meeting this other guy and you see their romance so it's kind of love triangle -y. you just get to see kind of two romances in this book and I honestly truly loved both of the guys in this book and who I wanted her to end up with went back and forth and back and forth the whole time I was reading this but then one character would do something really bad and I'm like oh I don't want her with him I want her with the other guy and then it would switch and it was just it kept me on my toes I read this book in one sitting so much happens again towards the end and it's just really chaotic I cried in this book too but yeah this book is very entertaining if you need like a drama filled book yeah this one also fits this trope but I'm not gonna go more into that because I feel like it will give stuff away that is the end of today's video I recommended so many books today so I hope that some of them intrigued you and you'll pick some of them up I've been reading so many standalone books recently so that I'll have new books to recommend so if you've already read like all of these books bear with me because i'm grinding out standalones so that i can recommend new books for you guys thank you so much for watching today's video you guys are the best ever i still can't believe we're at over a hundred thousand subscribers <laughs> that's literally insane if you want to follow me on my other social medias they're all linked down below as always and i'll see you in my next video very very soon bye